What's up my friends, welcome back to another video and in today's video we are going to be covering a very important topic that I believe uh, personally can really really help anyone in their composing and writing journey, especially if you're an arranger and orchestrator. This is uh, this will be especially helpful for you, I think, just to understand the concept uh, behind why I personally feel that learning the piano is so important as a virtual orchestrator or a virtual composer, um, it, it really matters a lot. So we'll cover that in today's video. But uh, just before we do that, I want to give you something that um, is actually my very first guide I put together called my 10 steps to a clear orchestral sound. So I'm rec uh, recommending this because um, learning the piano and learning basic keyboard skills will not only help you compose faster, but understand better how the different elements of the orchestra work when you start to play it together. So this guide basically takes you through 10 of the very core fundamental things we need to consider and know about when writing for an ensemble like the orchestra. So these are 10 th things that I like really thought hard about and I asked myself and challenged myself to say like if, if, if there were a few things, up to 10 things that I could recommend, uh, you know, to an upcoming composer, what would help them in their journey and, you know, what could they understand better about the orchestra, these would be what I would pick. So it's a totally free guide. If you want to check it out in the description box below, it's absolutely free. And I hope it will help you, um, you know, in your composing journey because um, just understanding the medium we're writing for is a, is a very crucial aspect of the music making process. So going into that a little bit further, talking about the keyboard and the piano in particular, um, just to give you a little bit of history for myself, I started off as a, um, a pianist uh, quite young, actually. I started learning at the age of five, and I was pushed by my teachers um, relatively quickly. So when I was seven years old, I was doing level seven. Um, when I, I took my grade nine exam when I was nine, my level 10 exam when I was 10, and I got my ARCT, which is like the level 11 in Canada, uh, when I was 14. And so basically growing up, uh, before I started writing music, um, having a facility on the piano really helps me not only uh, through hearing melody and harmony and developing my relative pitch, right? Um, because you hear those chords together and those different melodies and notes and you hear how they all combine together to create this kind of wash of beautiful sound. Whereas with other instruments that are monophonic that all can only play one note at a time, it's not the case because, you know, you can't really hear a melody with the, the harmony at the same time. The instrument can only produce one note at a time. But that's one of the reasons why so many people get their kids into music and p specifically piano um, so early in life is because it um, it's really a well-rounded instrument and it's a very approachable instrument as well. Like anyone could just sit down and learn to play. You just need very basic technique to be able to get those ideas out. So with that being said, I want to give you two core reasons why it's so important for us specifically as composers and arrangers and orchestrators. The, the very first one, and I think you will agree with me on this, is that for most composers, they use MIDI controllers to get their ideas from their head into the computer, right? That I think that's a given, right? So if you're a composer, if you write music on the computer, most likely you're gonna have some sort of electronic keyboard in front of your computer that you play stuff in, it translates as MIDI into your computer, and um, obviously the more proficient you are at the keyboard, then the less time you have to spend tweaking and quantizing and um, adjusting your specific MIDI notes in your DAW. So that that's really one of the core reasons why is because it's such a, it, it really is the core method of getting our ideas into our DAW um, using MIDI controllers, which are essentially electronic piano keyboards. So if you can have a basic facility on that instrument, then it's applicable to really any MIDI controller. Um, I It breaks my heart when I hear people say like, I'm slowed down because I don't have basic keyboard technique. So I spent minutes up to hours trying to pluck out different ideas in my head. And then, you know, by the time I get my ideas out, I'm starting to lose inspiration already, you know? So if you're able to play melodies and harmonies at the same time and just get that into the computer um, once and for all, you know, done, then uh, you still have that that moment of inspiration and continue to write um, upon that, right? So that's the first reason. It's more of a you know a, a more of a mental thing, and um, it just makes your life so much easier there. But in terms of actual arrangement and orchestration, the second reason why it's so important to play the piano is because the piano is such a um, a wide ranged instrument. So we have notes ranging from the lowest A to the highest C. So this is 88 keys in total. And um, it basically has the widest range of any instrument in the 
in the world. You know, I mean, some instruments can go low, super, super low, and some can go super, super high. But to my knowledge, the piano is the instrument that can cover very, very low things, very, very high things, and all the middle things as well. So like I said, it's a very visual instrument. It's a very practical instrument. Um, and, uh, and, and essentially why I'm telling you this is that it has a very neutral sound and a very, um, a very true sound that translates well to whatever ensemble you're writing for. So for example, if we're writing for the orchestra, then if it sounds good on the piano, it's most likely going to sound good in the orchestral context as well. And this is due to what we call the harmonic series. I did an entire video on this concept, the harmonic series, but essentially what it means is the lower you go, the more easily the overtones start to build up. So that means the lower you go on the piano or in any frequency, the wider apart your interval should be, you know? So you can see here, my D to my A right here, um, that's a, a perfect fifth apart. And then from my A to the D, that's a perfect fourth apart, right? So the interval now is a tiny bit smaller. And then if I go from D to F sharp, that's a third smaller. So I have a fifth, then a fourth, then a third. And this is what we call a D major chord, but it's extended. So the F sharp is not right here in between the D and the A, because this is what a regular major triad would sound like. But notice because it's kind of in the lower part of the piano, it sounds kind of muddy, kind of buried, and it's not very pleasant. So if I bring it up a couple octaves, maybe up to here, suddenly it sounds great. And I can take out the F sharp here from the left hand, and it sounds more open and clean. So if I play the same thing up here, notice we don't get any muddiness whatsoever. It sounds beautiful, it sounds transparent, and it sounds like it rings out to the world or to our ears, right? Really beautifully. So that's why, as a pianist, there are certain techniques we can learn uh, that will just very easily translate over to the orchestral realm. And that's why, you know, personally, when I was um, starting orchestral composition and developing my skills as an arranger, I actually never took any um, official lessons, you know, for comp composition or orchestration or whatever. A lot of it came down to just listening to how the different instruments interacted and also doing some score study to see, okay, these instruments in the lower registers are all playing like an octave apart or they're all playing like a 10th apart or a 15th apart because they all give us this wide, full, rich sound. Whereas the, the, the further you move up on the frequency spectrum, the closer together those notes can be. And so that's what's gonna give you a warm, rich, balanced sound is if you can keep those notes spread apart. So if I go like D, D, A, D, F sharp, A, D, you hear that resonating through the entire keyboard. Whereas if I play the opposite, and instead of doing close intervals up here, I do close intervals at the bottom like this. Now you get the opposite effect. It sounds muddy, it sounds dark, deep, and almost mean and growly, which could be a very cool effect if that's what you're going for, but um, generally, we're going for a nice balanced sound. And so the harmonic series tells us that when you're going lower, you should, you got to make sure those notes are spread apart at least an octave or, or maybe a fifth because a perfect fifth also has a very clean and open sound. So the perfect intervals, the fourth, the fifth, and the octaves tend to have a little cleaner and more open sound. But the octave being a very, uh, the octave is the most clean interval you can have because you're literally just taking one note and repeating it across, you know, an octave or several octaves. So let's go over a couple of examples uh, here and then use a patch from Berlin Orchestra Inspire. I'll, I'm just pulling up the, the whole ensemble sustains here to, uh, to demonstrate. But let's see, let's see, let's see. So if I play a D major chord right in the middle C register, just above middle C, and I do that same thing in the orchestra patch, let's see how it sounds. Right, let's try another example. Let's try maybe, let's try this D, A, D, lower here. Now compare that with the piano. Back to the orchestra.
okay, so what do you notice? They have a very similar sort of resonant quality in them. Obviously, the piano and the orchestra are very different in terms of timbre, but overall, the the um, the balance of like muddiness or clarity is the same between both examples, right? The piano, I mean, it kind of sounds a bit lower, right? And it has this nice depth to it. When you translate it over to the orchestra, it's the same idea, right? It's not any more muddy or any less muddy. It's kind of the same. And this is literally because of the notes I'm selecting on my piano. I have a root note. I have a perfect fifth, which is a more open interval. It's a perfect interval. And then we have another root note, which is another D. You know, but as soon as I put in the third, the F sharp, suddenly it muddies up because a third is a very strong note in a chord. If I go back to the piano, you get the same thing, right? Okay, so let's try really one last example here, maybe a little higher. This is a D sus four chord. We have a D, G, and A. Very ringing, very high, very bright. Let's compare that to the orchestra. Same effect. Obviously, the strings are a little bit higher, and you know, there's I think there's also woodwind later in there, probably a flute or something. But al although the timbres of the instruments are different, the the quality that we get from those two comparisons are almost identical. And so I like to think of you know the orchestra always as a color palette, and you know, there are four unique sections, right? Strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. But as long as you follow the rules of the harmonic series, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a, a, a balanced resonant sound, no matter what instruments you're using. Um, of course, there's always exceptions and you can push them to their limits. Like you could put a ton of brass in the top and some super low strings in the bottom and all that to try to force the higher frequencies to really like get muddy or whatever. But it's, it's just the way the sound works, okay? So that's all that uh, a long um, a long way to say that learning the piano is very important because for as a as an as an arranger or orchestrator, if you can voice things out on the piano and you like how they sound, then you're pretty much guaranteed that same result when translating that to another ensemble. And so that's why I always recommend learning the piano as your primary instrument. Um, and so number one again is because most people use MIDI controllers anyway. And so having that basic technical skill on the piano will just pay dividends for you in the future. Um, it's just so much more convenient than having to like use your keyboard to you know pluck certain notes in and then having to use you know your piano roll and fiddle, you know, fiddle with notes like that. It just doesn't, uh, it's not very good for workflow. And then number two, of course, is um, you know, if you can do it well on the piano and it sounds great, then you know it's gonna sound great on another ensemble, specifically in our case, the orchestra. So if you're interested in improving your piano skills, there are a couple things you can do. Number one, you can hire a private teacher, um, specifically one who maybe not only teaches piano, but teaches how the piano applies to certain other instruments. So if that's if that's something like interests you, you know, I do offer private lessons and instruction about that, like piano orchestration composition, um, taking our basic skills, taking those fundamentals and then applying them to, you know, virtual instruments, the ensembles, right? So getting one-on-one -on -one private instruction is very, very important. Uh, number two is if you're, if you, if you want to take the leap yourself and start learning those basic skills, a couple things I can recommend are learning how to play basic chords. I'm going to go back to my piano patch here, basic triads. So you should be able to play basic triads in all three positions, root position, first inversion, second inversion. Okay, you should also be comfortable with playing octaves. And in some piano exams, they actually make us do um, octave scales like this. You know, so one hand will ha literally just do the scale in octaves. You know, so you learn to stretch your hand and it starts to feel, uh, it starts to get used to the muscle memory, like what does an octave feel like? The same with chords, right? So once you get basic chords and octaves down, then what you can do is you can start expanding those chords a little bit further so you can include that upper root. And obviously this fingering will have to change. Um, you can also experiment with extended chords with one hand, even though that's harder to reach. So I'm doing D, A, and F sharp. My hand's not overly large, so that's more difficult to reach. But you start to experiment with what chords you can actually play. You know? 
and just learning basic piano repertoire will really help with this. So um, yeah, I, I just, that's something I, I wanted to bring up in this video is just that the, the, the benefits of learning an instrument, specifically the piano are unparalleled. And that's something I, uh, I don't want you to take for granted if you are a pianist and if you are a keyboard player, having that skill makes our lives so much easier as composers and as writers, you know, and if you are not really a keyboard player or a piano player, then uh, take the leap, you know, because it can only benefit you in the long run, I personally feel. So yeah, let, let me know in a comment uh, below. If you are a piano player, do you find it really helps you? Um, if you're not, like if you're not a piano player, then uh, what do you do currently to get your ideas in and what's your kind of workflow to get those those ideas down as quickly as possible and then you know work from there and uh, if you're interested in the orchestral side of things and you want to understand the orchestra even more again i want to point you to my uh, 10 steps to a clear orchestral sound it's really 10 of my very best tips that will pretty much guarantee you uh, a clear mock-up um, in the orchestral realm if you understand these 10 things about the orchestra so it is a it is a larger sized ensemble of course but the principles of sound kind of remain the same so I, we kind of dive into all of them in inside the document and i think it'll really help you so it's a totally free guide if you want to check the first link in the description box um, in any case thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it if you have any questions leave it in a comment below but i'll see you in the next video and take care my friends Bye bye